Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new trigger spring kit for your TC Venture, your TC Dimension. We got over a 50% trigger pull reduction for these two firearms. Really impressed with it. Really happy with the results. Can't wait to hear what you guys get. Let's jump on over the tabletop, put these babies in. Before we get started, let's go ahead and check our rifles together, make sure they're clear. Here's the TC Dimension. Move the magazine. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This firearm's clear. Now onto the Venture, go ahead and remove the magazine, check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. Let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we're starting with. TC Dimension, TC Venture. Three pounds, 3.6 ounces. Three pounds, 3.9 ounces. Parts and tools needed for this build, the TC Venture TC Dimension Trigger Spring Kit by M Carbo, 1 16th inch punch, 1 8th inch punch, fine tip, flathead screwdriver, standard tip, flathead screwdriver, a hammer, a 3 16th inch Allen key, bench block, and as always guys, make sure you're wearing iPro. We're going to start by disassembling the TC Venture first, go ahead and open the bolt, slide all the way to the rear, then hit the bolt release, slide the bolt all the way out, then turn it upright, and remove this front and rear takedown screw. The front takedown screw will be the shortest, the rear will be the longest. Now these takedown screws have washers sitting there in the recess. You'll see them right here. So here's your front takedown screw with the washer. Go ahead and set that aside. This is the shortest. And then your rear takedown screw right here. You might have to fish out that washer. Go ahead and do so just so you don't lose it. Here's a longer takedown screw right here. So that's the rear. Set that aside. Now you can go ahead and separate your stock from the barrel and receiver group. Just pull up on that stock. There you go, set that aside. Now we're gonna focus on the trigger assembly. Now we'd be ready to go ahead and focus on the trigger assembly. This is exactly the same as the TC Dimension, but I wanna show how the breakdown goes with the TC Dimension. So let's jump on over that rifle real quick. Now jumping over the TC Dimension, I just wanna demonstrate this really quick. I'm gonna jump back to the TC Venture and use that for the rest of the video. This is just the only difference between the two firearms. The trigger assemblies are exactly the same. Now with the TC Dimension, typically any kind of bolt action rifle, you go ahead and pull the bolt to the rear and hit the bolt release. You can see here on the Dimension that it's actually got this interference with the buttstock here at the end. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just leave the bolt in, and we're gonna just separate the stock from the receiver barrel group. You'll need that 3 16 inch Allen key. Go ahead and start loosening up the front and rear takedown screws. All right, once you got it all loosened up, go ahead and pull it out. Now you'll notice here that the front takedown screw is actually longer and it's even got a bushing on it. You'll see this little rubber O-ring bushing that's here. Now that's what's unique about this one. So it's longer, the front screw is longer, and you'll see here the rear takedown screw, how it compares. Shorter. So you can see the rear takedown screw is shorter, the front takedown screw is longer, isn't that weird? So this is something that's unique to the TC Dimension right here. So that's all you really need to know at this point. Then we'd go ahead and separate the stock from the barrel and receiver group. And then you can see the same exact trigger assembly. Now we can go ahead and remove the bolt from the actual receiver. So you go ahead and pull up on the bolt handle, slide it all the way back, hit the bolt release, boom, there it is. And now we're in business. So there you go, the TC Dimension, same exact trigger assembly. Let's do a quick side-by-side. -side. So here's your quick side-by-side. -side. I've got the TC Venture here on top and the TC Dimension here on the bottom, same exact trigger assembly. So that makes life pretty easy now. There you go. TC Dimension here on top now, TC Venture here on bottom. Exactly the same trigger assembly. So let's go ahead and jump back to using the TC Venture for the rest of this video. I'll go ahead and do the dimension on the side here and we'll do a quick comparison of both of them at the end to see what kind of modified trigger pull we got. So I'm gonna set the dimension aside and now we're gonna focus on the TC Venture. Now we're back to the TC Venture for the rest of the video. We need to go ahead and remove the trigger assembly from the receiver. So we'll tap out these two pins right here that hold the trigger assembly to the receiver. Take your 1 16th inch punch and your hammer and go ahead and tap those out right here. It helps if you've got a bench block, you can position it over the holes on your bench block so that these pins will go all the way through. All right, there's one, there's two. All right, we can slide our trigger assembly right out. 
Nice, look at that. Now let's do a quick review of the trigger assembly. You can see on the outside here, it's a little intimidating at first, but just take notice that all your hardware is back here on this side, right? So everything we need to do for the disassembly is removing these two C-clips right here, then removing these two stock plate screws right here, and then removing this one standard E-clip right here. So five items that we have to remove Everything over here is the external hardware that's actually bolted to the outside of this trigger assembly, these two plates. So we're going to be disassembling this whole thing. Not that scary, not that complicated. Most important thing is to remember the orientation of everything and to pay attention to it as we disassemble it. You can see here, this is the actual trigger safety lever. And you see how it locates and interacts with this actual safety linkage here. All right. Primarily this little tab on the sear. You can see how that locates against this linkage on the safety, right? So very important and critical to take notice of. Okay, so that's something we're gonna make sure we replicate for sure. You can also see this detent down here. This is spring-loaded. This is something that's gonna come out once we remove the actual safety lever. So some things that I just like to point out ahead of time so we're not surprised during the disassembly. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna take out the trigger assembly plate screws. So you're gonna need your fine tip flathead screwdriver. All right, something a little bit smaller. This is a 330 seconds if you've got something. Otherwise, you know, the little tiny screwdrivers that come in the little precision kits would be best. So I'm starting with the center one here. These are exactly the same. So no we need to worry about getting them mixed up. All right, so just two screws that hold the plates together and then the rest are these hinge pins. All right, here's the second screw here. Okay, you don't have to worry about anything popping out. So these two screws are exactly the same. I'll just show you up close. No need to worry about getting them mixed up. All right, now you can see this orientation here. So these two lower C-clips that we were just looking at right here. All right, you can see this is your trigger hinge pin here, and this is the safety linkage pin here. Then your actual trigger lever is controlled by this E-clip here. So we'll start off with the bottom here, the trigger hinge pin, all right? And you're gonna take your bigger flathead screwdriver, and you're just gonna push that C-clip right off. And then take your 1 16th inch punch, and it'll help if you can just pop it off like that, all right? There's a little eyelet there, it makes it a lot easier. Now we'll take our flathead screwdriver again and push the other one off. All right, and just be careful. These will try to fly away on you, so be as gentle as possible. Don't push it off with any extreme force. The idea is to get it halfway and then take it off with this 1 16th inch punch. All right, so we've got these two hinge pins loose now. All right, I got my fingers underneath holding some pressure on them, and I'm gonna rotate this over so you can see it. So I'm gonna push this trigger hinge pin at the bottom. I'm gonna push that right out, all right? And you can take your punch to push it the rest of the way through, like I'm about to do here, okay? And what you'll see is this is shorter, all right? And it's got a fatter head on it. It's a short little hinge pin, all right? With a fat, wide head on it, remember that? Okay, set that aside. Now we've got our safety linkage here, all right? And it's held in by this longer hinge pin, because it has to actually hold that piece of metal to the outside of the plate, so it has to be longer. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our safety linkage and we'll set that aside along with the longer pin. Set that aside with it. All right, now all we've got left is the actual safety lever, which is capturing this spring and detent down here. So just be mindful of that. We don't want that little spring to go flying away on us. So same process. Now we're gonna flip it over in our bench block and go ahead and take our bigger flathead screwdriver and we're gonna push this E-clip right off. Helps if you got your finger in front of it. That way there, if it does try to fly away, you can catch it. See that? That thing just popped. So it's, luckily I had my hand over it, but these in particular, this type, will try to fly away on you. So be careful. You know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Set that aside. And that's the only standard looking E-clip. All right, now I'm holding, you can see I'm pinching this whole plate assembly together because nothing else is holding it together at this point. Um, and you can see this little detent and spring here want to go flying away. So I'm gonna put my thumb over that and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out on this lever. All right, I'm holding down on that little detent and spring as I'm pulling out on this safety lever. Easy as that, okay? Now I'm still holding everything together and I've got the lever in my hand here. I'm gonna set this down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slowly back off that little detent. And you can see it's gonna fall right out with the spring. So I'm gonna turn it over, give a little tap, there it is. All right, little tiny detent, it's tan, all right, and the casing's tan, so it's easy to match up later, and a little tiny spring to go with it. Set those components aside as well. Now, let's really focus on this trigger assembly as we pull it apart. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down on the bench block. Now, let's really focus on this trigger assembly as we pull it apart, all right? I'm gonna slowly just kinda 
wiggle it loose here. All right. And you can see this casing's captured, right? So if it popped out or got jagged, it just slides right in and just kind of locates in place. It's a little bit of an interference fit, all right? And you can see here's those recesses for those plate screws right here, those two screws that actually hold the plates together. Okay, good. Set that aside. Now you can see your trigger and how it locates together with the actual trigger return spring and sear spring. It's a combination. It does both jobs. So it actually gives you that trigger return spring action down here, all right, and then that counter action up here on the sear itself. So you've got quite a bit going on with this one spring, which is really cool. It actually allows us to give it a pretty significant trigger pull reduction. So we've got, when it's all together, you know, this is the, the sear, the trigger and sear engagement surface up here, all right? So it's all together and compressed, and then it's actually working to do that trigger return spring action back here as well. So it's a really cool design. I'm a fan of it, I like it. And it really did afford us a nice way to reduce this trigger pull really easily too. So you can see the way this sear is going to sit in the assembly when we put it back together. All right. One thing I want to point out, the way this sear is designed, it's got these little notches right here on both sides. You can see how you have a cylinder here. Now that's going to locate in this big channel. All right. So the sear is going to sit and locate in the assembly like that. So it's going to have these notches sitting underneath right here on the top edge of this plate. So that's important when we put it back together. All right. And here is the actual trigger return spring, sear spring from the factory. So you can see with the factory spring, it's got this little insert here. All right, we're gonna keep those two together for just for right now. We're gonna grab the M-Carbo trigger return spring and compare the difference. So you can see the TC Venture, TC Dimension trigger spring kit by M-Carbo, all right? Phenomenal upgrade, and it's really fantastic that it fits both firearms and they're exactly the same. All right. Here's the M-Carbo trigger return spring here. All right, I'm gonna have that in the left. Nice and springy. And then here's the stock factory spring here with a little insert in it. Pretty good difference right there. You can see the M-Carbo spring is really flexing quite a bit. All right, let's put in the M-Carbo spring. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll pull that insert out of the factory spring, set the factory spring aside, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Put the insert right in the M-Carbo spring. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and just drop the M-Carbo spring into this assembly. All right, I'm gonna slide that spring right in. And I'm gonna make sure we're doing this, we've got it captured. We've got the base plate in the trigger return spring, sear spring, and it's captured right here in this notch on the trigger. And then there's a little tiny tab detent on the top of this sear you saw right here, right? That's going to be centered on the inside of this coil spring here. And we're going to make sure that notch up top, remember, we pointed out, is going to be locating inside that cutout on the plate. All right, so it keeps it all together a little bit as it's sitting here, which is nice. All right, now before we drop the other plate on top of this assembly here, I would highly recommend putting this on a bench block or something of some kind. Don't leave it flat on the table like this. It's just going to make it a pain. You want to be able to get up under this assembly. So from this point forward, I'm going to use the bench block. I didn't want to use it because it's black on black and it's kind of hard to see, but it, I'm going to use it just for the sake of my sanity here. Now we'll take the other assembly, we'll drop it on top. And like we mentioned earlier, you want to take your punch and make sure that you've got that sear captured in this assembly before we start putting pins together. So you can take your punch and you can drop it in through those holes to move stuff around. All right. That's the biggest thing is making sure that we're lined up. And see, the nice thing about the block is I can pick up this assembly no problem. If it was flat on the table, it'd be a little tough. All right. So you can hear it all snapping and popping together. That is key. Okay. So we got these plates to locate on those little tabs in the sear. All right. And that's the first step. So now that we've got it all snapped together and it's kind of held in place by hand here, we're keeping pressure on it, squeezing it. We're going to flip it around and we're going to drop in these two plate screws, all right? And they're universal, same size. So you're going to drop in one up here and you're going to drop in one right in the center there, right there. All right, then you take your fine tip screwdriver 
And you want to make sure these are actually lined up. You don't want to cross thread them. So I'm lining them up. There we go. All right, not cinching it down just yet. See, I'm going backwards there to kind of line up the threads. Kind of getting the feel for it there. All right, there we go. All right, it's lined up. All right, cool. Nice and snug. There we go. All right, good. So we've got the actual trigger assembly plate screws in. That is solid. So if you got to this point, good job. You've got a good start. Now it's all downhill from here. It's going to be getting these three hinge pins in place. One, two, three. Easy as that. So it's going to take some alignment here in a second. So we're going to start with the easiest one. This is a short pin. It's a trigger hinge pin. It's got the fat head on it. All right, short length and you're gonna drop it right in here. And you may have to move that trigger around a little bit as you're pushing down on it. It should go in and almost fully seat flush. You can see a little tab of it sitting out there, but primarily you wanna make sure you've got access to it over here to get your C-clip in there. The C-clip here is the funny looking wave spring, okay, C-clip. You push down on your bench block and push that little C-clip right in, all right? And it helps too if you angle it all the same direction. This little screw here might get in the way for this next one, you'll notice. All right, so if it does become a problem, you can always back this screw off a little bit, push this in, then tighten it up. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our linkage back in together. This is important. So you're gonna take your trigger safety linkage, rest it just like this, okay? And then you're gonna take your longer pin, and it's gonna go in the center right here. All right, now the most important thing you wanna take notice of is this tab, this little point right here. You see that? Here's a little tab that's sticking out on the sear right here, okay? This needs to be able to get up under that tab on the sear, so that's what we got. So we got the tab here pointing up, right? Here's our trigger down here, so pointing up. Boom, there it is. All right, good. So now we'll go ahead and flip it over. Same thing, push down our bench block, okay? And we got our C-clip, all right? And push that down. It helps if you push down on that C-clip and then you push forward with it. All right, and you can use your finger, you can use the back side of your punch, you can use your punch or your flathead or whatever. And definitely with this one, you know, it may help to push it a little bit so that you can get it to actually snap in place. You know, this one didn't give me that warm and fuzzy snap. So I'm going to just take this flathead screwdriver, back off the center screw just a tad, and then I'm going to push my flathead. There we go. Boom. You saw it fully seat. Now we're going to tighten up this screw in the center here, and we're good to go. You can see that. There's almost just enough interference there. All right, but they're fully seated now. There's no exposed window, no space. All right, can't see any of the recess there on the back side of these pins. So that's good. And we got our two plate screws in. Man, we are cruising. We are almost there. Now we got to get the most important part, which is that safety lever. So we're going to need the spring and detent, then the lever and the hinge pin. Almost there, guys. Really doing good. All right, now we're all centered up. We're going to take our detent and our detent spring. All right, go ahead and put it together just like so. Okay. Now hold it together, pinch it together, and drop it right in that hole. All right. Make sure it goes up and down. Good. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our lever, right, and we're going to orient it in such a way that we basically accomplish two tasks at one time, which is keeping pressure on that detent with this back portion here of the actual safety lever and getting the pin to locate. So you can push down to get proper clearance. So you can see all the way through that hole, put your finger on top of that pin, all right, and just get it started, okay? Now, orient it correctly. So go ahead and get your linkage in the center, Go ahead and get this portion of the lever to sit on top of that detent and spring. And then go ahead and rotate. There you go, just like that, okay? So now I've got everything captured. I've got the alignment perfect, okay? Now I just need to make sure I get the actual E-clip on the other side. So I'm delicately turning this around and I'm gonna take my 1 inch punch and just kinda, there you go. I pushed it the rest of the way through right there, and I can get access right here. You can see it. All right, I've got my E-clip there, and I'll take my flathead and push it right on. Boom. Hear that click? Beautiful sound. 
All right, so it's located, it's in place, and now let's make sure it functions. Awesome. So safety lever is functioning properly. And you can see that tab there on the linkage, right? It's pointing towards that tab on the sear on the top of the assembly. Our trigger down here is the bottom, top of the assembly. So we've got our tab in the right place, linkage is the right place, and it's all functioning. All right, good. Look at that. And we've got our two C-clips down here. We've got our two plate screws here. And we've got our one E-clip up here. Awesome. We're ready to put this back in the actual receiver now, so let's go ahead and do that. So now that our trigger assembly is back together and functioning properly, we're going to go ahead and insert the trigger assembly back into the receiver. You can see there's an actual lever here and a notch here, so we'll go ahead and line those up. All right, and then we've got our takedown pins. We'll go ahead and drop those right in. Now there's a little bit of a tapered end here on one side, so go ahead and lead with the tapered end. All right, and you go ahead and just kind of get them in there, get them started. Same, these pins are exactly the same, so no need to worry about which goes which side. All right, now you can feel around, you can move the trigger assembly up and down until you get them to slide in, or you can just flip around and try to look down in there as you're pushing from underneath. There's a couple different options there, you know, both work really well. And you can also take, once you got it started, you can take your 1 8 inch punch and you can give it a few little light taps to kind of drive it the rest of the way in there shouldn't be much resistance at all so you don't need to hammer away and make sure that they're level on both sides so when you turn it upright it should be primarily even on both sides you just don't want it to cause any sort of interference and looks like we're good to go there I just want to make sure this is completely evened up because there is that linkage there in the back all right cool Good to go, look at that. Now we're ready to drop it back into the stock. Now that our TC Venture is back together, we're gonna go ahead and turn our barrel and receiver group upright and we'll take our stock for the TC Venture and slide it on top of the barrel and receiver group, get it to fully seat. Now we're gonna take our takedown screws and insert those. Remember the short takedown screws in the front, the longer takedown screws in the rear, and you should have your washers on each one of the takedown screws. Let's go ahead and drop those in place. And you start threading them in by hand. It's a good way to make sure the threads are lined up. Take your flathead screwdriver, the bigger one, and start tightening them down. Good and snug, and then you can alternate back and forth when you start putting some torque on them. Good to go. Now we just need to take our bolt and insert that back into the receiver. Go ahead and line up the lugs, slide it forward. This channel right here on the side of the bolt will line up with this bolt lock. You'll hear it click, lock into place. All right, make sure it does lock, and you try to pull all the way back, and it won't pop out on you. Look at that. Good to go. Man, all right, let's go ahead and we're gonna check the safety and the function of it. So put it on safe, pull the trigger, nothing, good. Put it on fire, pull the trigger. Oh, man. All right, let's go ahead and check the trigger pull on this. That is beautiful. All right, let's see what we got. Now let's see what kind of modified trigger pull we get. TC Venture up top, TC Dimension here on the bottom. One pound, 5.1 ounces. Now let's see what we got on the Dimension. One pound, 11.7 ounces. Fantastic trigger pull reduction. Well, there you have it, guys. Fantastic trigger pull reduction for your TC Venture, TC Dimension. Really can't beat it. Really impressed with it. Thank you, M. Carbo Brother, for your ideas and your support. You guys recommended this one, and we made it. Enough of you requested it, so here it is, guys. Can't wait to get your feedback. Really excited to hear what you guys get for a trigger pull reduction. We went from three and a quarter down to one and a half pounds. Really phenomenal on two different rifles, the TC Venture and the Dimension. Really happy with it. Thank you, M. Carbo Brother, for your ideas and your support. And as always, happy shooting. <laughs>